To fabricate the window, you will need a drill, impact driver, allen keys, snips, and measuring devices. Cut all your profiles according to the cutting list. All components are supplied by INIT systems. First of all, we have to route the profiles. The sash bottoms need routing, one either end. Larger sashes will need one in the middle. On this die line at the front of the sash here. There are two types of mullion, one that's screw ported, which goes upright, and one that's non-screw ported, which goes horizontally. The routing details for your mullions are provided on this picture here. On the handle side of your sash, you need an 8 by 70 mil slot in the centre of the profile, just behind this little piece of aluminium here. Now your profiles are routed, we can go on to punching the profiles. Punch station 1 and 2 is for the frame cleat. Punches these four holes here. Punch station 3 is for your reverser cleat. Going this way for this side and the other way for the other side. And punches these four holes here. Punch station 4 is for your sash drainage in the frame. Mark your center line on the top. Slide it into the punch to the center line on the punch and press the pedal. Before punching on non screw bolt up mullions, make sure it is routed out. It can then go in punch station 5. This way around, it can also be placed in the other way around for these two holes here which attach to your cleats. Punch station 6 and 7 are for your sash cleats. It can go in this way around for this side and the other way around for the other side. Punches these four holes here for your cleats. For the face draining on your reverses, it is punched in section 8 of the punch tool. Slide it in to the centre line on the punch to punch this hole here. This window has one central mullion which is screw ported. Mark your centre line, slide your jig into place using the centre line on the jig, tighten the screws and drill through the four holes with a 5mm bit. You should end up with these four holes here. For your non-screw ported mullions, these sit on cleats. First of all, mark your centre line. Slide them in from the end, like so, and screw on with short 16mm screws. Before assembling your frame, make sure you attach your non-screw pots of mullions. These are attached with two screws to the bottom side of the mullion. These screws are provided by us. Use a 2.5mm allen key. This is how you assemble your frame. First of all, one chevron goes here. These cleats are slightly offset with the holes. The hole needs to go to the outside of the profile on both sides, as shown here. So both go to the outside of the profile. Once you have all your cleats in the frame, silicon the edges of the profile before assembling, making sure the chevrons sit in properly. We repeat this process from the other side, making sure you have silicon the edges of the frame first. When putting your screws in the cleats, tighten one side loosely, put another screw in the other side, and tighten accordingly until your corner is straight. Repeat the process for the bottom two screws until the corner is level and straight. Repeat this for all four corners. Once you have done this, wipe the excess silicon off the edges of the frame. Now your frame is together, we can put in the screw potted mullion. Line it up with the centre lines we drew earlier, making sure the holes line up. 
you can screw it on with 4.2mm screws through the holes we drilled earlier. Your frame can now be put to one side while we do the reverser profile. This is everything you will need to put your reverser together. First of all, we need to drill holes approximately 300mm apart and countersunk to attach your reverser to the frame. When putting the cleats and chevrons in the reverser, one chevron goes in this slot here, one frame cleat with a hole to the outside goes in the outer face, and one sash cleat with a hole in the centre, which doesn't matter which way round it goes. Repeat this process for the other three corners, making sure your frame cleat hole is to the outside of the profile. Before screwing your reverses together, make sure the outer holes are countersunk so the screws sit flat. For the size of your reverser, which will be touching a mullion, this little leg needs grinding off so it sits flat in the frame. When piecing your reverser together, make sure to silicon the edges first. When putting the cleats and chevrons in, make sure they're lined up on the inside. Repeat for the other side, not forgetting to silicon all the edges before assembly. We can now put the screws in the corners, tightening the same as we did with the frame. When putting the bottom two screws in, make sure the screw head sits flat to the profile. Again, we repeat this process for all four corners, making sure the screws on the outside sit flush to the profile. Now your reverser is together, we can apply the e-gasket or captive. Cut at 45 degrees in the corners, put it in, always pushing back to one side to stop stretching. We can now lay the frame back out on the trestles and apply the reverser, making sure the drain holes are to the bottom of the frame. Turn the frame over and screw in the reverser through the holes we drilled earlier. You can put silicon over the screws to avoid corrosion. Once your reverser is screwed into place, we can now apply the bead. When gasketing the sash side of the frame, we use flipper gasket. Putting one side first and always push back to that side. When you get to the corner, bend it around the corner and push into place. Your frame is now complete. When working on the sash, Make sure the hole is routed first, then we can put the cleats in. One flat cleat into this side, with a hole in the middle. Two chevrons, one in the top, one in the bottom. And one sash cleat, also with a hole in the middle, in this side here. Repeat this process for all four corners. When piecing your sash together, make sure you silicon the edges first, Make sure the chevrons line up in the slots provided and repeat this process for the other side. Before screwing your sash together, make sure any screw that was underneath the friction stay is countersunk so it sits flat to the profile. Then screw on the same as we did with the frame and reverser. Tighten the screws until the corner is level and straight. Again making sure the screw sits flat where the friction stays are. Again, we repeat this process for all four corners. When gasketing the outside of the sash, we use the flipper we use for the frame, starting from the middle at the bottom, so no water can get through the gap. When you get to the corner, bend the gasket around the corner and push back towards that corner to avoid stretching. When you get back to the start, cut the gasket 5 to 10 mil long to avoid shrinkage. We can now apply the e-gasket or captive to the inside of the sash. Cut at 45 degrees, the same as the reverse it profile. Always pushing back to one corner.
When beading your sash, always bead the handle side first, so you can shuffle glaze your glass in behind the handle, stopping you from having to pull the gearbox out. You can now put the other beads into place. To drill these three holes for the handle, we get the center line we drew earlier for this slot, put the jig into place, making sure it is flat onto the profile, lined up with the line earlier, and drill these three holes with a 5mm bit. Take the jig off and open up to 10mm. Put your gearbox into place and put the handle in, in the open position. Screw on with the two screws provided. Now your handle is screwed on, slide the cap over the top screw. Screw on the S-Bag with 16mm countersunk self-drilling screws. To find out where your friction stay will be sitting, first we mark off the centre of the top hole of the friction stay, making sure it is the same distance from one edge of the sash and the other edge of the sash, and carry the mark off onto the sash. When screwing your friction stay on, make sure it is screwed on this die line here. First pre-drill and screw the end hole, centralise it in that hole, and then put the other screws in. Leave the final fixing hole until the sash is in the frame. Repeat this process for the other side. Your sash is now complete and ready for installation into the frame. Before putting your sash in the frame, put in these black plastic spaces where the friction stay will be going. These holes are already drilled for us in this window, but these can be slid into place once your sash is in. We can now put the sash in the frame. Slide the black plastic spaces behind the holes on the friction stay before putting the screws in. Mark off your gasket where your drain holes are on the frame. Get your knife and put a slit in either side of the drain slot and then cut the flap off the gasket. Put the marks on for your keeps, mark up the centre of each gearbox, shut the sash, carry these marks off onto the frame and these will be the centre lines for the two holes on the keep. When screwing on your keeps, push the keep all the way to the back and lift up till it stops. One screw goes in the thermal and the other screw into the aluminium. You can now adjust your sash until it works smoothly and then put your final fixes in. A centre seal can also be added to the inside of the sash chamber on the frame to add extra weatherproofing. Your window is now complete and ready for installation.